I'm going to talk about today is agents and workflows. And uh, oftentimes these worlds collide and there is some level of intersection. And we oftentimes get the question, okay, what's the difference between an agent and what's the difference between a workflow? And uh, what are some patterns that we can actually use to build some agentic automations or agentic workflows? And I think kind of the simplest definition of the way I like to look about look at this is that agents, they're non-deterministic. Uh, you give it a goal, you leverage large language models, and they will dynamically direct their own processes and kind of the paths that they will go ahead and take. If we think about workflows, those are what I would consider more deterministic, right? We, we sort of code or configure these specific swim lanes and our process basically runs through them in a very consistent manner. But I think there's this opportunity of bringing these two worlds together. And that's kind of, uh, you know, what's going to be sort of highlighted in this talk is this ability where you want maybe some deterministic. How can you sort of plug a, a workflow into that as a tool that helps you address that particular need? But then also, how can we actually leverage large language models to help us with this orchestration as well? And um, being able to automate. At the end of the day, James made a, a great opening statement here where if you're doing things more than once, you should look at automating. And using AI only allows you to go after more use cases than you otherwise may be able to achieve. So the one pattern that I want to talk about today, uh, and this comes from Anthropic. So uh, go ahead and check out that link if you wish. But it's called the Evaluator Optimizer Pattern. And this is uh, great when you have a workflow. And in this case, I'm going to use a Logic Apps workflow. And the idea here is that you're asking AI or the LLM to go ahead and generate some sort of content or generate some sort of message. And then you want to be able to have a follow-up process that is going to test it, stress test it. And the idea here, you know, people oftentimes are concerned, well, what if my AI hallucinates? And I think... A lot of those concerns are valid, but that doesn't mean that you stop the show. You know, that means that there's some governance or oversight that's required. And there's typically two flavors of oversight. Uh, one is actually you can use AI to check up on AI. Uh, the other is naturally a human and bringing a human into the loop. So today I'm going to use an LLM to provide that oversight as an evaluator. And then perhaps in a future video, I will do the human in the loop thing because I think that's just as, as interesting from this perspective. Okay, so how do we make this real? Uh, here's a, a high level process. We've got a quote generation system, right? So we've got a, a we're a, in this case, a, 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 we call it Fourth Coffee. It's a fictitious uh, coffee company. I like coffee as much as James by the sounds of it. And what we do is we have these quotes where you might have like a large commercial customer that wants to make a big order. They want to go through a quote process and so what you do is you have a, a quote that's being generated. It lands in a system. I'm going to use Dataverse. And now we want to be able to go ahead and construct an email that gives that customer that quote. But we want to use AI to be able to go ahead and do that um, in an efficient and, and streamlined manner. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to a Dataverse event. We're going to grab that quote information. And we're going to provide it to the large language model, say, hey, construct me an email that includes these specific details and send that out to the customer. Now, we don't want hallucination, right? That would be bad if we sent an embarrassing email. So what we can do is have a, a validation step where we're going to give the large language model basically some instructions. I would like to call it constraints or governance, that, that famous G word, and then be able to go ahead and say, is this valid or, or not? And the idea is if it's not valid because it doesn't conform to our sort of needs or our requirements, we're going to loop on that and we're going to say, hey, uh, you're missing this or this needs to happen. And so I, I like to look at this as kind of like a separation of concerns problem where the propose, its job is to generate the content. The validate step, its only job is to validate and give you thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and then if you need to sort of uh, make changes, you need to, you know, use the feedback loop to give that feedback back to the proposed step. Now, um, in the event that we wanted to have a human, instead of the LLM basically looping here, what we would do is inject the human and say, okay, human, what would you do to improve this? And naturally, over time, what you can then go ahead and do is update your model to include 
these details so that in the future you've got this continuous improvement situation going on. So this may sound like it's very complex, but it, it really isn't. Uh, this is the workflow that I'm gonna go ahead and show. And uh, I'll flip over to the Azure portal and we'll take a closer look. Alrighty here. So this is, uh, I'm in the Azure portal and this is all available for you to do today. So uh, there's no sort of preview features here. Um, this is just gonna be my Dataverse trigger. I'm gonna look for any new records that are updated or added. I've got a couple variables. One is just to store some additional requirements that feed back from that validate step. And then here I've just got a variable that I'm gonna use to uh, break my loop. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use this built-in connector. This is the Azure OpenAI connector. And we've got basically our prompt and there's sort of two roles that are, are taking place here. One is the role of a user. And we're just asking for a quote to be generated for a customer. Then what we've got is the system. Uh, and what this, this is our constraints. We're, this is what the system is asking the AI to do. So we're saying you're an AI assistant. Your job is to help automate customer quotes for fourth coffee. And you have access to the actual quote from the quote system. And that's going to come from our trigger, right? That's coming from our first step in the workflow. Then we're gonna say your job is to assemble a quote that includes relevant information because Dataverse contains a lot of information. It'll have like 40, 50 fields. We only want around five. And so your job is to uh, include a, an email or generate an email that includes the quote number, the customer name, the email, the value of the quote, expiry of the quote, and any available discount if necessary. And then the actual data from the quote um, you know, will be used. Not so it doesn't sort of go grab other data that maybe it was trained on. Uh, we then say, go ahead and create uh, an email that is formatted in HTML and include a signature of like fourth coffee company quote department and include our contact information. We also give it some instructions around removing any sort of HTML tags, oftentimes large language models. When you say, build me something like this, it'll kind of give you these delimiters. And so we're saying we don't want that. And also account for any additional requirements from this variable. Now. This variable initially is blank, but this is that feedback loop that we're gonna to get to here shortly. Now, I've added a compose here. You're gonna see this when I run. Uh, this is just for debugging purposes and to make it a little bit clear. Uh, this is gonna be the response. So basically the quote uh, that's generated from the large language model. And then what we're gonna do is have another step. And in this case, we're gonna say validate this quote for the customer. And so now we're giving some different instructions. And we're basically saying, you know, your job is to validate this quote. Uh, this is the information from the quote. Make sure that we have the following fields, quote ID, quote ID, customer name, customer email address, value, et cetera. Also ensure that there is a terms and conditions. Now, what's interesting about this is that I did not include that step when I went to generate this. So this should, um, if the terms and conditions aren't there, we should catch this. And once again, this is how we can automate that governance by saying these are the things you can say, and these are the things that you can't say. And so that's essentially the job of this particular step. And here, we're gonna get any feedback and we're gonna store that in this variable. And then what we're gonna be able to go do is then uh, send that back up um, if necessary. Um, this is another strong capability that uh, I think people sometimes overlook is that AI is really good at summarizing content. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're, now the job is, I just need a Boolean output. Like, is this a valid quote or not? Because that's going to help me in this downstream condition. And so we can basically then take the output from the validate step and say, is this a valid quote or not? And it'll return true or false. If it's true, then I naturally have this condition where I can go ahead and send the email. Um, and if I do send the email, I can also break the loop. Otherwise, uh, we're going to basically go ahead and, and loop again. And so that's kind of this whole idea is that uh, you kind of have this oversight that's providing governance and is going to actually ensure that what we send to the customer is, is good and conforms to our needs. So let's go ahead, let's run this and let's see this in action. So here I'm in the Dataverse table. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the value of this quote to 2100. And this is going to allow our process to, to run in the background. So let's just move this over here. Uh, we'll take a look at our run history. So if we flip over here, give this a refresh. Uh, it will take a few seconds just for it to kick off. 
So we can see that it is running here. Let's go ahead. Let's see what's, uh, what's happening live. And in this case, uh, and this is where AI gets a little bit interesting. Um, in this case, it did do the straight shot and uh, it was good. We only had one iteration, but let's see what's going on from this perspective, right? So here we've got basically the quote that is, is coming out of this. And here we see that it has included a standard terms. And, and that is why this worked. Um, even though I didn't ask it to, it said, hey, this is a quote. I can see I've got a, a column here that says like uh, that these are basically the terms and conditions. Let me just show you that. That's this column right here. And so it did that on its own thinking it was a good idea. And so in this case, the validation step uh, was, was good. Like it didn't have this. Uh, so let's, let's go back to the run history. And uh, like I mentioned, this was kind of like that, um, I guess, the happy path, right? Where the AI exceeded our expectations. And the outcome of that was that, like, life was good. It, here it said, like, the quote was validated. So this was basically the output. It went through our governance check and it said, hey, like, this did what we wanted to, that I'm happy with this. And it, and it goes ahead once again and can say that the output of this was that it was true, right? So it's a valid quote. So we subsequently went and sent that email and you know that looks good from, from that perspective. Now, let me just go ahead and find the email. And you know this was the one that just happened, right? So here we've got all of the details that we did want and it did include standard terms applied. Now, maybe you could argue, why is it at the end? And, um, you know, that's where kind of we could sort of tweak this and make sure that gets, it's occurring in a different place uh, in the email itself. So let's take a look. Uh, I was running this earlier and you can kind of see the difference. Like when you see this running in three to four seconds, that means like it went on the first take. Uh, if we see something where it's probably like 10 seconds, it probably didn't go through on the first iteration. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And sure enough, we can see that a loop took place. So we went ahead and we, we, you know, retrieve the quotes and we can see like we've got all of the different details that are here. And uh, I'd be willing to bet in this case, like we probably don't have the terms and conditions. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we do, but let's see what the validator said. Like the validator came back and said, uh, the quote is missing the terms and conditions. Please ensure the quotes, uh, terms and conditions are added. And also I have another step where sometimes it was trying to include the customer's phone number because it thinks like that would be a good thing to do. Uh, maybe it is, but in my case, I didn't want to do that. So I'm also making sure that it does that. And so this is feedback that is then going to be sent back up to um, our initial step and we can regenerate and include that particular feedback. If we take a look at the output from this step, it's going to say false. Yeah, this is not a valid uh, quote. And so then we're going to go ahead and we're going to loop, right? So if we come back up and go to this next iteration, we're going to now include this feedback that we previously had. And so if we look down in our prompt, um, you know, we're now going to go ahead and we're going to include that here, right? Um, so, so that's where like this, that's why like this is kind of interesting is that kind of the AI can govern the AI. And then when we think about what is the output from like the second attempt, uh, this is where we'll be able to go ahead and have the sort of the right outputs uh, from that perspective where we should have the terms and conditions. So here we've got uh, basically a row in our table that is saying terms and conditions, standard terms apply. And then when we go ahead to subsequently validate it, that's where we're going to see it's now a valid quote. And therefore we're going to go ahead and send out that email. So I've got um, another sort of example of this one when it did run. And let me just go ahead and find it. But, um, but yeah, like that's where we have this information coming out from that perspective. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the demo. And uh, I think kind of the key takeaway here is that, you know, AI we know isn't perfect, but we do know that we can embed governance in those processes. And I think the one thing that's really important to think about is the AI is only going to get better, right? And I also would say that 
you know, AI, it's not just a, a magic switch either. Like you do need to um, continue to provide feedback and that's where you can automate that by using AI. Um, or if necessary, you can also loop a human uh, and have them go ahead and refer it. But they're not doing all of that work manually themselves. Um, they're just basically giving you the acknowledgement of thumbs up, thumbs down, and then providing any feedback that needs to change. So you're still getting productivity from that perspective. So yeah, that's uh, that's the demo. I uh, hope you found that uh, that interesting. Mm -hmm.